Somebody sent me this clip here. This is incredible. It's Ross Perot at the 1992 presidential debate with Bill Clinton and George H.W. Bush. And he's spot on about what free trade, a.k.a. outsourcing, will do to the American economy. Uh, what will you do as president to open foreign markets to fair competition from American business and to stop unfair competition here at home from foreign countries so that we can bring jobs back to the United States? That's right at the top of my agenda. We've shipped millions of jobs overseas, and uh, we have a strange situation because we have a process in Washington where after you've served for a while, you cash in, become a foreign lobbyist, make $30,000 a month, then take a leave, work on presidential campaigns, make sure you've got good contacts, and then go back out. Now, if you just want to get out of brass tacks, first thing you ought to do is get all these folks who've got these one-way trade agreements that we've negotiated over the years, and say, fellas, we'll take the same deal we gave you. And they'll gridlock right at that point because... For example, we've got international competitors who simply could not unload their cars off the ships if they had to comply. You see, if it was a two-way street, just couldn't do it. We have got to stop sending jobs overseas. To those of you in the audience who are business people, pretty simple. If you're paying $12, $13, $14 an hour for factory workers, and you can move your factory south of the border, pay a dollar an hour for labor, hire a young 25... Let's assume you've been in business for a long time, you've got a mature workforce. Pay a dollar an hour for your labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element, making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement, and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. So we, if, if the people send me to Washington, the first thing I'll do is study that 2,000-page agreement and make sure it's a two-way street. I, one last point here. I've called, I decided I was dumb and didn't understand it, so I called the who's who of the folks who've been around it. And I said, why won't everybody go south? They said, we'll be disruptive. I said, for how long? I finally got them up for 12 to 15 years. And I said, well, how does it stop being disruptive? And that is when their jobs come up from a dollar an hour to six dollars an hour and ours go down to six dollars an hour, then it's leveled again. But in the meantime, you've wrecked the country with these kinds of deals. Man, did he nail it. It's kind of scary how right he was. And I mean, what he's describing is very simple. And in fact, I think the business community knew about this all along. They knew what the result was going to be. They just didn't care. They know that if you decide, hey, uh, American corporations can stop actually functioning here in America, and they can set up shop in Bangladesh and Mexico and all these different places. Well, you no longer have to pay uh, a unionized workforce $25 an hour plus benefits, plus dental, plus health care. Uh, and you can take all these middle class jobs in America, eliminate them. And what's going to happen to those people? We don't care because we're a corporation. We're all about profits. Now I know I can go ahead and move to Bangladesh pay a little 14-year-old boy, uh, you know, a dollar and 23 cents to do the same thing that this guy was doing here for $25. So what am I going to do? I'll do that because it increases profit. It increases bottom line. That's what I, as a corporation, am structured to do just by virtue of the way the system works. By definition, a corporation is only uh, concerned about profit above all else. They're amoral machines. So the thing is, up until we started doing NAFTA and GATT and all these free trade deals, WTO, uh, we were in a situation where we had protectionist policies. So you weren't allowed, you simply were not allowed as an American corporation to set up shop overseas. And if you were, you were heavily fined, heavily taxed. There were disincentives to do that. But when the business company, the, the, all the businesses and all the companies bought the government, well, then the government started doing their bidding. So when the business owner said, get rid of all those, those icky protectionist laws that help the American people but uh, cut into our profits and let us go to Bangladesh and Mexico and all these different places, well, what was the end result? What he predicted would happen is exactly what happened. You had uh, all these middle class uh, jobs in America gone. Uh, you had all the jobs moved overseas in these horrible slave-like conditions. Now, the prices of the goods went down. But it was irrelevant because we lost almost all of our purchasing power either way. So, yeah, the prices are down, but nobody's got any money to pay for the products. And then what happened? You destabilized the economic system. We used to have a middle class that was the envy of the world. 
Now, uh, in terms of the modern industrial nations, we have one of the weakest middle classes, 